And that bass is why I'm never allowed back in Niagara Falls. What does the giraffe have to do with anything? Oh, that's another story. See, back when I was... Wait a sec. Is that Comic Sans over there? I thought he was researching. Hey, Bass, I'm gonna have to call you back. Hmm, this should be interesting. <sighs> nope. Negative. Not helpful. Hey, <gasps> Comic Sans! What you do it? Would you keep it down, Blue? You're in a library. Why? We're the only ones in this joint. So, how's the research going? So far, not so good. I still can't find anything else on Mage Meadowbrook. She's almost as much of an enigma as Star's Roll the Bearded was when he was first brought up in the show. Hmm, how's about this? Instead of making a video about Mage Meadowbrook, you help me make a video on her eight enchanted items. How? We haven't seen them in action, much less heard about any of them. Or maybe we already have. Explain. You remember all those mysterious items we've seen appear in certain episodes without any explanation as to where they came from or who or what made them? Well, what if those are actually some of the eight enchanted items? That seems a little far-fetched, don't you think? Although... It would explain their presence in the show. You know? You might be onto something, Blue. Then what do you say we get started? I already have my list of possible candidates. And I just finished mine. Before we start, I think we should mention that items such as the Elements of Harmony, and to a greater extent the Tree of Harmony, as well as the Rainbow Power Box won't be included on the list since those are essentially connected to one another and have been shown to have existed for over thousands of years, so it's safe to say that they're not part of the eight enchanted items. We should also exclude both the Power Ponies comic and the Magic Geodes from the Legends of Everfree movie. Agreed. So let's start this list off with my first pick, the Mirror Pool. The mirror pool was said to allow the user to make as many clones of a pony as possible when reciting a rhyme that activates the mirror pool's cloning process. Once the process is complete, the clones are able to do everything that the original is capable of doing, but at the cost of some rather important qualities. See, while the clones may be nearly flawless replicas, they're kind of… well, stupid. Like, really stupid. I see what you're getting at, Blue. However… I don't think it's one of Mage's enchanted items because of its location, the Everfree Forest. That place is known to contain its own type of weird magic that's only really reined in by the aforementioned Tree of Harmony. So it stands to reason that such an item would have existed earlier than the historical mage we are talking about. Yeah, not sure if an item like this is worth the collateral damage, especially since the clones all share the same face as the original. Also, while I do see such an item as falling into the category of enchanted, I think a much better pick for the list would be one that's capable of being easily movable from one group or pony to another. A perfect example, the Idol of Boreas. The mere presence of this item not only changed griffins from greedy, bit-loving Scrooges, but it also made a very prosperous kingdom by filling the griffins with a sort of community pride. However, like the invalidated Mirapool, the item has an arguable downside to it. It makes the greed of others increase as well, which in turn could lead to them stealing the item for themselves. And it makes sense that the loss of such an item would lead to the kingdom falling to ruins. So, if you ask me, it could have been a gift of a traveling pony mage. <laughs> cough, mage Meadowbrook, cough! Admittedly, that's a bit of a headcanon, but with no origin story, it's open to interpretation. While I can't dispute the fact that this item has no place of origin, the idea of such an item being enchanted to only bring pride and glory to a specific race is not something I'd see in an enchanted item. 
I mean, it would basically serve the same purpose of giving pride to the owners if it wasn't enchanted, seeing as though the Griffins were recorded to be naturally hungry for bits or treasure. It was probably just so unique in design that everyone felt it could represent the Kingdom of Griffinstone in a more symbolic sort of way. Still, your pick does have a lot going for it that could possibly make it one of Mage's items. However, I still have a few more picks up my sleeve that can serve a much better purpose than the Idol of Boreas, such as the Inspiration Manifestation Book. This item allows the user to bring any inspirational thought into existence, thus allowing the hoarder to create and reform anything into something else without any prior magic training to do so, which sounds like something a gifted unicorn would be capable of making. Yes, but it ignores the Law of Equivalent Exchange! Full Metal Alchemist references aside, it is just a spell written into a book. A book made of stone, but a book nonetheless. It also could have been one of the many spells scrawled on those stones. That would explain why when Rarity turns the tablets into an actual book, it has more than just a single page. But the only true way to see that is to look at the book after it passes through Spike's digestive tract. I know Spike isn't going to have any interest in any books once that thing passes through, assuming the spell hasn't worn off once it was consumed. But hey, if it did, that's future Spike's problem. Now as for the spell itself, I think it could have been written in stone and the book itself was enchanted to work when the spell is read, thus classifying it as one item with only one purpose. If other spells were written in the book, then I could see it being just a regular spell book. However, no other spells were mentioned in the episode, so this one I see as being a possible item of Mage's collection. Fair point. What about the items collected by Daring Do? If Aoi Zodal is so interested in most of them for personal gain or power, they must be enchanted in some way, shape, or form. But we don't know enough about them to know what they are or what the full extent of their power is. So then, how exactly are we both gonna agree on an item? I don't know, I only have one item left on my list. Huh, what a coincidence. Me too. Let's say it at the exact same time and see if they match up. Okay, but if you jinx me, I'll rearrange your whole anatomy. One, one two, two, three, three Alicorn Amulet. Jinx! I'll take care of that later. For now, we actually agree on something. And seeing as this particular item actually holds the most promise on this list, I could see why. Because when it was introduced in the episode Magic Duel, it was said to bless the user with untoward powers, but at the cost of not only corrupting the wearer, but also preventing anyone else from taking it off and possessing limits to the types of spells that it could cast, such as duplication, gender swapping, aging, and even the strange ability to play 10 instruments at once. However, despite these limits, it has the most potential to be one of the 8 enchanted items of Mage Metalbrook. Cause not only does this item not have an official place of origin that would contradict its inclusion on this list, it would actually help explain why Twilight didn't recognize it during her fight with Trixie. Because back in Season 5, she stated that she didn't study Eastern Unicorns as much as she should have, meaning that her knowledge on the subject is arguably very limited, only knowing a few crucial aspects of their culture. So it's quite possible that she wouldn't recognize the Alicorn Amulet until its name was revealed to be in one of her books. And what about the IDW comics? Does it make any sort of appearance in them that would second as a possible place of origin? Not at the moment, actually, although I am a few arcs behind. Though it would be a really cool idea if they did expand upon it. But, quick question, Blue. Why would Mage Meadowbrook make items that have such evil potential? The Alicorn Amulet in particular literally corrupts the user by wearing it. Good question. See, the purpose of this item, as well as the other items we mentioned earlier, actually have something in common. They all give someone either help with something that they're unable to do on their own, or the desire for greatness, success, and power, all of which can't be obtained so easily. 
So naturally, being a great mage with incredible skills and knowledge, it would make sense that Mage Meadowbrook would create items that would help improve one's skills to further benefit them and the way of life of others. But as we all know, when trying to do some good for the world, you actually end up doing a lot of bad for it too. Hence the negative effects that some of the items have had on those who've wielded them and anyone else that they have come in contact with. Plus, it was never stated whether or not Mage's items were successful in doing what she originally set out to do with them. Just that there were eight items in total. <sighs> the road to Tartarus is paved with good intentions. So all in all, we only came up with one most likely item and two possible items that were Mage Metalbrooks' eight enchanted items. Not exactly eight complete items, but still, there's more to come in MRP in the following year, so we might see something come up in a future episode. Hope every pony enjoyed our speculations on these mysterious items, and I hope you will let us know in the comments below if you have any suggestions on things we should have included in this list. Anyways, I'm Comic Sans, and that was my two bits on this subject. I'm Blue Wave, aka the Waving Lunatic, and like a lazy trapeze performer, I'll catch you later. Now, about that jinx from earlier. Um, sorry, it was a joke. It's supposed to be funny. Too bad I wasn't laughing. Oh, uh, well, um, would you look at my wrist? I'm late for a thing in Appaloosa. Get back here. I said I was sorry.